You've probably never heard of KX826. It's a new boldness topical medication made by a major Chinese pharmaceutical company. It has just completed its early phase clinical trials, and it's now moving into late phase research. Guys, this could be big, and you'll learn all about it in today's video. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Now, just before we get into the video, if you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So, the company behind the new drug that we'll be covering today are Kintor Pharmaceutical. Founded in 2009, the company's research pipeline is heavily focused on cancer treatments, but their portfolio also includes drugs for acne and boldness. In this graphic, you can see the company's product pipeline. Kintor are listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, and their market capitalization is currently shy of half a billion dollars. So, Kintor's boldness drug is called pirolutamide, codename KX826. It's a so-called topical androgen receptor agonist and is being researched as a treatment for both boldness and acne. So as you probably already know, pattern hair loss in men is mediated by the action of the male hormone dihydrotestosterone or DHT for short. DHT attaches to a molecular structure on the surface of the hair follicles called the androgen receptor. You can think of a DHT molecule as the key and the androgen receptor as the lock. DHT's activation of the androgen receptor then sets in motion a cascade of events inside of the cell, and these are thought to contribute to hair follicle miniaturization and boldness. KX826 is a gel which is applied topically on the scalp, and it blocks the androgen receptors on the scalp and hair follicle by binding to them, but without activating them. So it's sufficiently similar to the endogenous androgens that can bind to the androgen receptor, but different enough so as to not actually activate them. Think of it as a poorly made copy of a key. It will be similar enough to insert fully into the lock, but no good enough to actually turn and open the door. But having this binded androgen receptor, KX826, prevents DHT and the other androgen hormones from binding to it thus effectively blocking the receptor. At this point, we have very limited information on the details of the drug. There have been no published papers and everything that we have comes through the company announcements. When it comes to details of the trials, the only information that we have is posted on the clinicaltrials.gov website, which obviously I've linked to in the description. Now, this was the phase one trial that assessed the drug safety and tolerability and recruited a total of 40 patients. It assessed various strengths of the drug, but what's interesting is that they were all done once daily. So off the bat, it seems like the company are aiming for once daily application. And that means not the dreaded twice daily that you would get with minoxidil. According to a press release put out by the company last month, the results of this research were good. The drug was found to be safe and to be tolerated well. And luckily to know, there were no sexual side effects. Now, according to Dr. Tong, the CEO of the company, and I quote here, the phase one and 1B clinical trials of pirolutamide in the United States have preliminarily proved good safety and tolerability of multiple topical administration. We are closely communicating with the US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and earnestly prepare for the subsequent trials. We intend to accelerate the clinical research and launch the drug as soon as possible to address the deficiency in the existing therapies and bring good news to patients with alopecia. So at this point, things are looking very, very promising. The drug is now going phase two trials in China. And according to a slide from an August 2020 presentation, during which the company presented its interim results, the plan is to start phase three trials in China in 2021. So these are the last stage of clinical research. Large scale, randomized clinical trials which will recruit patients from multiple research centers. And if the drug does well in these trials, then the company will seek its marketing approval, with the US and China probably being the first two countries where it will be sold. So guys, this news follows just literally a few days after the FDA approved class for the treatment of acne. 
thus making it the first drug to get this distinction in several decades. In case you're not already familiar, clascoterone is a topical androgen receptor made by the Italian pharmaceutical company Cassiopeia, and Cassiopeia are currently in late-stage clinical trials to get the drug marketed for the treatment of hair loss, in addition to the acne approval. If you read Kintor's announcements, they don't hesitate to compare their drug to clascoterone, and they are understandably excited that a drug with a similar mechanism of action has just gotten FDA approval. So, it seems like after a long period of stagnation in the boldness pharmaceutical market, we may be close to not just one, but two new topical medications, both of which are topical androgen receptor blockers, with presumably minimal systemic absorption, and hence none of finasteride side effects, or at any rate, far fewer. So guys, for a country with one of the largest populations in the world, it is really surprising that we haven't had any major Chinese products against hair loss until now. Even though pattern hair loss is not as common amongst Chinese men as it is amongst Caucasians, it is still a pretty big market. Approximately 250 million potential buyers, according to Kintor. And in China, as in other industrial countries, the incidence of boldness keeps on creeping up and up. Now, I do want to give a shout out to folliclethought.com for bringing this story to our attention. And I've linked to the URL of Follicle Thought's story below. And guys, if you'd like to know more about the eight steps that Will, the founder of Hair God, took to reverse his hair loss, then make sure to click the video on the screen now.